The Apple iPhone 12 is here with its latest and greatest form of a CPU chipset in a mobile, the A14 Bionic, run on 5 nanometer technology, the first of its kind. We have the prices at the top, all in relation to their current US prices on Amazon. We have updated the software on all devices over here, Android 10 on the two devices in the middle, Android 11 on the two OnePlus devices and iOS 14.1 on the two Apple devices all the way on the left hand side. The iPhones both come paired with Apple Bionic chipsets, though the latest being on the iPhone 12, the A14 run on 5 nanometer tech. The rest of the devices are all running on 7 nanometer plus technology, the A13 on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, Snapdragon 865 Plus on the Samsung and the ROG phone, and the Snapdragon 865, the vanilla version, the standard version on the OnePlus 8T and 8 Pro. We have 60 Hertz XDR LED panels on the two iPhones all the way on the left. The Samsung, Asus, ROG, Phone 3, OnePlus 8T and OnePlus 8 Pro all have very high refresh rate panels, all at 120 except for the ROG Phone 3 going all the way up to 160. The iPhones are roughly between Full HD and QHD resolution. This cannot be changed. We have QHD on the Samsung as well as the OnePlus 8 Pro, but I've dropped it down to Full HD Plus to match the other resolutions here. We have no high performance options on the iPhones. We have high performance mode as well as focus on game performance on the Samsung and using that wonderful game launcher. We also have max performance mode using X mode on the ROG Phone 3 as well as Armory Crates and we have game space and Fnatic mode on both OnePlus 8 devices here. We are running the same Antutu version 8.4.7 on the Samsung ROG Phone and OnePlus 8T. I couldn't get the latest version on the OnePlus 8 Pro for some reason but it's still pretty high up at 8.4.3 and the latest version available on the App Store for iOS is indeed version 8.4. 3.4 on the iPhones. I'm really excited to share the results with you guys today. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. We're going to start off by checking the battery percentages at the start of the test of year. We'll of course compare this at the end of the test to see which one drains the most in terms of milliamp hours per minute. We're using an emissivity level of 0.5 on my thermal heat gun over here and the room temperature is around 27 degrees. Here are the degrees at the start of the test. Once again, we're going to be comparing this at the end of the test, not so much to see which one gets the hottest, but which one adds the most in degrees Celsius throughout the 11 minute test that we actually have going over here. We're going to hit start in the OnePlus devices at the same time. Time, the two Snapdragon 865 Plus devices at the same time and the two iPhones at the same time. I will be speeding through certain parts of the test and slowing down certain parts so that you guys can see the fluidity of the chipset running the different sections of Antutu. We're currently in the first section over here with the fire truck as well as the little alien dude that pops up. Everything is nice and smooth on all devices over here, whether it's 7 nanometer plus tech or 5 nanometer tech on the A14 Bionic chipset. They all look pretty darn smooth and don't really take notice in which one is going faster than the other since I don't exactly have six hands to start them all at the same time. That's why I started them in segments over there. Second part of Antutu over here. Once again, it's pretty easy to jump through on even a mid-range device over here. You shouldn't see any jitteriness over here. We're going to speed on through after this to get to the third part, which is indeed the Terracotta Soldiers. I've been here, I always tell you guys this, but it is a really beautiful place in Xi'an, a district here in China, not far from Shanghai actually. It looks great, but it looks even better with the snow knocking the Terracotta Soldiers in the third part of Antutu version. Eight. All of them are doing an okay job. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but the iPhone 11 Pro Max has actually dimmed quite a lot over here. This is not because of automatic brightness or auto adapting to the actual display, but it's actually because the phone is getting too hot. I did try to clarify this up in my last Antutu run, but the strange thing here is it doesn't seem like the iPhone 12 is having this issue, though it did get a little bit janky over there if you looked on the left when zooming into the top of it, finishing off the third part part of the Antutu version 8 over here. The iPhone 11 Pro Max's A13 Bionic chip is actually looking a lot smoother in this regard and the Snapdragons all look pretty smooth over here. No jitteriness. I'm not quite sure what's happening with the iPhone 12's A14. Maybe this will get fixed with a future software update. We're going to speed through again and obviously they didn't all match when it comes to checking the refresh rate panels by slowing it down. I've slowed it down over here. We have 60 hertz on both iPhones so they look pretty much the same over there. We have 120 hertz on the Samsung Samsung and 160 on the ROG phone. You can see a slight difference over here, a little bit more ghosting on the ROG phone. You'd have to feel that in reality, but in my personal opinion, you honestly can't really feel or see no 
notice any much of a difference. The 220 hertz panels on both OnePlus devices both look pretty great. They're going at different speeds at the current moment. That's why you saw more ghosting on the OnePlus 8 Pro. When it comes to battery percentage at the end over here, we have the best milliamp hours per minute reading coming from the iPhone 12, which is 12.8 and the worst on the ROG phone 3 with 21.8 milliamp hours per minute battery drain because of its massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery, pretty much double that of the iPhone 12 over here. Testing out overall device temperatures over here. Something very strange happened with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It actually dropped down in degrees in Celsius. Very strange, but its peak heat was actually cooler on the iPhone 12 with 44.5 degrees in Celsius and only adding 2.3 degrees in Celsius where the ROG Phone 3 added the most at 6.5 degrees and the OnePlus 8 Pro hit the highest peak here with 55.6 degrees in Celsius. When it comes to final scores, sixth place, we got the iPhone 11 Pro Max with under 500,000 points. Fifth place, the iPhone 12 with 562,000, pretty much almost 100,000 better than the 11 Pro Max. So it's good in that regard, but it's not good when comparing it to Snapdragon chips, which released at the start of the year. Moving on to fourth place, the Snapdragon 865 powered OnePlus 8 Pro got 575,000, beating the five nanometer tech from Apple's A14 Bionic chip. Third place, the OnePlus 8T, slightly newer than the OnePlus 8 Pro, but using the same chip. So it's no surprise to see that the scores are very similar between the two devices. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra almost at 600,000 points. I can't really seem to get it past that 600,000 barrier, but I can't really say the same for the ROG phone since I always get over 600, 630,000 points on the ROG Phone 3, rocking that wonderful Snapdragon 865 Plus processing chip, run on seven nanometer plus tech, not five nanometer tech, like on the A14 Bionic, though the A14 will most certainly be more efficient in something such as a drain test. The ROG Phone 3 got allocated the best CPU and the worst CPU was awarded to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Best GPU once again to the ROG Phone, worst GPU this time to the iPhone 12. Best memory to the iPhone 12, worst memory to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Best user experience, ROG Phone 3 and worst user experience, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm not quite sure if I can believe that one. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I would really appreciate it if you could smash that subscribe button if you have yet to do so. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.